incredibly valuable. So I, I appreciate your effort there. Um, but for now, let's pivot to React. Like I said, I think this will be one of the toughest days. Um, so patience, please. Uh, you're gonna feel overwhelmed, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, but um, yeah, we, we have all of the rest of the bootcamp to just focus on React, which is great. So with that being said, why We'll start with the what is React, but then quickly to the why. Why are we spending so much time and effort learning React? There's really two reasons. Kind of the uh, uh, how does it make our applications better, and then the, the logistics life one. What is it, how does it improve our our lives? Um, so from the pre work, what is React? Uh, what do you what did you get, Kevin? In your own words, kind of what, what's the deal? What is React? Is it like a, is it like a, kind of like a JavaScript? A what? A JavaScript framework or something? Yeah, so we're, we're going to say a JavaScript framework. It's kind of like an application. I mean... Pretty much combined with Vite, especially. Uh, well, let, let me let me check in, um, Victor. Can you add to that a little bit? What what is React? What does it do? Um, from what I from what I got to, it's like it's a more from what I can say it's a more direct way to interact with the HTML side without actually going into the HTML and just doing everything from the JavaScript side? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's So it's purely job. Well, yeah, it's purely JavaScript, but uh, its output is what I'm trying to get at. And so it's an application that builds us websites, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So we write functions. Uh, we write functions that return JSX looks like HTML and it will produce uh, the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But, but, but why do we need to learn something new? We, we made really complex... We made a really complex application uh, last week, right? Milkman it did a, it did a lot of things, a, a lot of interactions, a lot of moving parts. Why do we have to suffer uh, to learn this new thing? What what does it do for us? It's faster. It will be faster, yeah. But why is it faster? Because it's um, component based versus. Like the whole, <laughs> the whole page. Yeah, so it's faster. Can anyone add to that? The why is and, it faster? Yep. Is it good to learn less code? Um, so it turns out the manually manipulating what is very expensive. What did we do yeah. a lot of? Dom. The dom. Yeah. Is very expensive, and not to mention hard, right? So I, I wanted you guys to experience the pain of, um, <laughs> oops, experience the pain of keeping your state in line or matched with your view. So React will do this for us automatically. And I mean, technically, we could just have one big render function, and call, every time we make a little change, so we up we the the amount of bottles increased by one. We had to find the p and change it right manually, and we could do that all in a render function and just call that render function all the time. But but what's the problem with that? 
you have to render the entire page. Yeah, we're, so we don't want to pick and choose because then it becomes impossible. So we just want to call render every time, but then we're rendering entire page. So imagine if like, do you guys know how many lines of code Google is? <laughs> Someone take a guess. This is always fun. Is it less than you think it's going to be? <laughs> no, it's, I, I don't know, but it, it's more than you possibly think it's going to be. Quintillion? <laughs> no, it's, I think it's like a bil billions, which is always funny. Uh, lines of code. Yeah, two billion. So imagine if Google had to like, it was obviously there's more than just a front end website going on, but they had one function to refresh all their code, you know? Um, so React behind the scenes knows exactly the smallest amount it needs to change in your DOM, and it does that automatically for you. Um, it knows that if you change state, it will update the DOM for you. So never again are we using what? What functions are we never going to use again in React? Adding event listeners and... Yeah. So document, document dot. dot... Or inner HTML. Yep, all that. But query selector, uh, document, dot... What else? What do we use? Create element. Yeah, create element was a big one. On and on. You were never manually manipulating the DOM again. Uh, you are still using CSS a lot. So then maybe the question is, well, why did you make us learn? <laughs> why, why I spent all weekend, I, st I stayed up all night learning the DOM. Why did you make me do that if we're not using it anymore? Does, any, does anyone maybe. have it? Maybe just to know it in case framework changes later on. Uh, important to understand how React is functioning. Because React, the, the browser can't understand React. The browser only understands HTML, CSS, and JavaScript at the end of the day. Um, so, so React is just compiling code that does all this fancy stuff, but it's, but it's still using create element, document.create element, query selector, all that. Um, but also, most of you guys will end up as React front-end developers at a startup. That's just how boot camps like this work. But some of you will not. Some of you will literally just be vanilla HTML and JavaScript. Some of you will be in another framework entirely. But it'll be a framework that feels like React. Um, it's kind of like how if you learn one programming language well enough, you'll you'll pick up your second relatively easy. So that is the why of that. Um, who knows? Maybe eventually there could be a boot camp where I've I've never actually heard of one where they don't do. Have, have any of you guys heard of one a vanilla where they don't do any vanilla? I've never either. Um, who knows? Maybe no. maybe five years, that's how all of them will be because it'll be so bizarre to just do vanilla HTML anymore. But we're not there yet. So that's React. Um, makes our applications faster. An application that makes us applications, basically. And it is nice to never have to worry about finding elements and changing them again. But this comes at a cost. We have to play their game. We have to learn... Uh, all this new syntax. So let's learn that, right? How do we make a React app? Um, so we run a command called npm create v. That's step one. So we're going to be using the terminal a lot in VS Code. Um, I I like using the the. Uh, Wow, this, the name totally, uh, I forgot it. The, the embedded one, there's another name for it. 
the create one create react app no no i'm talking i'm just talking about the terminal the the embedded terminal in vs code there's another name for that but um anyway if you do want to use the terminal outside of it not a huge deal if you're more used to that um so let's do it right i'm going to do npm create v and then the question maybe is what is v and it's just an application that helps us easily create React applications. Let me pause there. Any questions so far? Should we be following along with what you're doing or just watching? Whatever works for you better. Did you get that uh, thing at the bottom of your digital studio to show up? Where did I get the terminal? The terminal. Oh, uh, if you uh, click on VS Code terminal, new terminal. Is that what you mean, Kevin? Okay. All right, so it's asking us what we want to call our project. Um, so this, I'm just going to say lecture. Uh, today, you might say something like, uh, what day are we on? 4, 8, 12. Are we day 13? You might say day 13. So Vite does a few different things. You might have heard of Svelte or Quick, uh, but we're learning React. Um, we're not doing TypeScript yet. We're going to go ahead and choose JavaScript SWC for speedy web compiler. So the last option. Um, should I be writing this down? Yeah, probably. Uh, choose yes, Re please. React, choose JavaScript. What was the question? Oh, no, I was just saying yes, please, to the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Down. I realize that, yeah, I, sh I should be writing this down. Um, will we learn TypeScript? No, we will not. Yeah. What's the difference between with the SWC? That that runs faster, right? It's like in Rust or something? Supposedly, yeah. It's turn it stands for Speedy Web Compiler, like Ronald said, written in Rust. Um, it's going to supposedly run, uh, when you press save V and react have to actually create the HTML every time in CSS and JavaScript. So the browser can run it every time you press save and make a change. And supposedly this does that a little quicker. I haven't really screwed around with it enough to know if it does for my environment. It's not going to matter at the end of the day too much, but it's probably nice that we're all on the same page. Um, okay. Project is created and it's telling us we need to do these steps, which are accurate. So we got a CD into our project. And what I like to do in, in VS code, what I, I really recommend all you guys doing is open this folder directly because then when you open your terminal, it defaults to where you are in VS Code. You know you're in the right place if you see package.json. We'll learn m way more about this in backend, but this is like the, uh, the, the root of our project folder. Um, so next step, once, we're, uh, once we are in the correct folder, uh, npm i and this stands for npm install again we will learn w w way more in depth in back end uh, but for now this is installing all our node packages which you can kind of think of as javascript code other people have written that we're using I don't really care that you have your your mental model is more complex right now because I know there's a lot going on, on the screen. I want you to focus on what matters for right now. And what matters for right now is is not many files at all. This is what? This is I can't hear you, Kevin. One more time. This has been uh sorry, I'm sorry, your mic is is uh, crapping out. If you want to type it in Discord, I can check out. Um, okay, so that's step two. Step three is npm run dev. 
this will run our React application. I guess step four, I can say, um, open up the link it gives you. You can just hold control and click it. And there we go. So we now have a React application. The one file we need to care about though right now is this app.jsx. And what I recommend doing is just clearing out their stuff. So starting kind of fresh. And we can even delete everything at the top for now. So just kind of this naked function. Um, yeah. So our first objective of the day, I want a website that says, hello, uh, React, right? Hello, React. How can I do that? Um, Kimberly, what do you think? How can I build a React website that says, hello, React? Um, I'm a little lost at the second at the moment because I can't get this to install and like dang I'm getting errors. So oh. my mind is on that. <laughs> okay, no worries. Uh Ryan, what do you think? I want a website that says hello react. Um first you could see the uh variable with some JSX syntax saying You want me to make a mix. variable? Yeah. Okay. Uh like your like your title or whatever. Okay. Um, and you would use um, HTML oh. tags. Sure. Yes. So you want me to use a HTML tag? Yeah, I'm not really sure, Max, but yeah, you could use H1. Uh, okay. Um, and that would work. And then in the middle, put your whatever you're saying. Okay. This works. And then at some point, you need to call render, but I'm not sure when. Oh, no render. That's old React. We're using right. the new sexy React. So only Sorry. only hooks and functions. Yep. We're pretty close, though. This went in a different direction than I thought, but this works. Need to put the curly brace between the div for title. Yeah. Um, so I can inject some JavaScript by that. And now, why, did, why is it all the way down here, our Hello React? Can anyone take a guess? Because they have uh, already have CSS on the app. Yeah, V pollutes us with all this CSS. So let's just go ahead and do nothing, right? Um, let me simplify this for the time being to this. Not that that doesn't work completely what we did. I just want to keep it very, very simple. So what we're looking at is a React uh, application that totally is working and it's been, it's been compiled to just be this normal HTML that we're used to. Uh, so we're looking at what we're looking on the screen is our first React component. So what is a React component? We're looking at it, but describe it to me. Uh, Sydney? Just like, like I always say, but like that's how like I break down the pages, just like, um, I don't know how to explain it. But, um, What's its basic data type? What is app? Just, oh, it's just like 
Just like the function? Yeah, it's just a oh, function. But there's one special thing about this function. That returns... A React element. Yeah, that returns JSX, stuff that looks like HTML. Or... We'll get into this later, but or another React component. So I know it looks weird. We're combining functions and what looks like HTML, but it's, all the same rules we've learned are still apply. We have a normal function, except it's returning JSX, what looks like HTML. Um, questions on that? Our first React component. And this is how we build React applications. All these functions that return what looks like HTML. All okay. So uh, next objective, I want, what do I want? Um, probably don't need to draw this out, it's a little, A little uh, excessive, but why not? Um, so I want a <clears throat> a box. Uh, we'll say under Hello React, I guess. There's no reason we can't keep it. I don't want it blue though. Um, whoops. Yeah, I just want black. There we go, right? I want a box. Who's brave enough enough to make us a box? Add a div, but go to style in CSS. Yeah, that's going to be the easiest, right? Um, so should we give this an ID of box? And then we can go to index.css like normal. I think I can close this terminal. I don't think I need it. So all the normal CSS applies. We don't have to change that. How can I uh, make this box show up? Um, part of width and height. To it. Yeah, how do I target it first? First of all, um, box. Yeah, I need one thing though. using the yeah. Oh, sorry, the dot. Oh no, sorry, hashtag. the hash. Hashtag. Yep. And then you said width and height. I think. Very nice. Uh, still no box though. What do I need now? Background. Uh, I don't want a background. The box is white. Oh. Border? Yeah, border. Very nice. We have a box, right? Um, that's fine. That's good. I, uh, I want 100 boxes. I want 100 boxes. Paste. <laughs> yeah, that would work. <laughs> we could do that, but I don't want to. I'm feeling lazy. So this is a normal function. We can write JavaScript. Everything we've learned still applies. How can I make a hundred boxes? Could you just write a for loop and put the return part inside it? Uh, that's an interesting idea, but no, because a function, when it hits return, what happens to any function? It will return a value. And stop. Yeah, and stop, yeah. Yeah. So 
Theoretically, if we did your ID, I would just return one box. Or maybe the for loop inside the return. Yes, that's what we want to do, right? But so the rule of React is, um, let me delete this. React rules, for whatever reason, we can't use for loops in the return. It's just a rule, but we can use it before the return. Maybe if I show you this, it'll spark your imaginations. Yeah. What if somehow... I think, I think the rule was like, um, you can only have like uh, expressions or values in, yes. in yep. the JSX part, because otherwise the parser will get confused. Like, hey, is this like HTML or, you know, like JavaScript in them? So it only like that's why you have to use those specific like weird uh, different ways to do the JavaScript yeah. expressions. Oh, yes, correct. That's all correct. Um, so we can't do a for loop in here, but we can do it here. Any ideas? Did you do, oh, I was going to say do a for loop with the return, but I'm not sure. Well, let's do a for loop without the return. See where that gets us. What were you thinking? Less and, e less and equal zero. I less, but I less more than a hundred. I pass pass. And now we can match, I think. Let's create an array to store all these boxes. And now, how can I create 100 box elements and put them in this boxes array? Let's just do 10, keep things a little simpler. So what would we do in Java, in normal JavaScript? We'd do like, we'd create a div element, right? See, boxes.push and then put the div. Yeah. But here it's even easier. We can just write JSX. So for right now, I'll just say box, even though that's kind of cheating, right? And then this is the cool thing in the return statement. In the return, I can inject normal JavaScript. So how can I get all my boxes arrays to show up here? Um, just by using curly braces. So here I can put my curly braces and I can put what variable? Boxes. Yeah. Boxes. And now it's as if those 10 divs in an array are right here. So it's equivalent to this. Um, what did we have? Oh, div. Like 10 of these. I'm just going to do two because this is annoying. Do you see that? That's going to be equivalent. That's what we're injecting. But I don't want the word box. I want an actual box. So we have more work to do. What do we think? Give the div an ID. The ID. Yeah, but how many of these boxes are there? A hundred. Well, yeah, there were 100, but now 10. And IDs oh, 10. Are, are usually for what? 
just one unit. A unique. Yeah, unique. So ID would be a little dirty to use. What's what's a better thing we can use? Pro Plus. Plus. Yeah, and now we encounter another React rule. We can't use class like we're used to. We have to use class name. So another rule, right? We can't use class. We have to use class name. Does anyone know why? Is class is a preserved reserved. word? Or, yeah. Yeah. Reserved, not preserved. Reserved word in JavaScript. And this, even though it doesn't look like it, is just normal JavaScript at the end of the day. So we can't use the word class. So uh, we'll call this box. That's fine. So now what do I have to change in my CSS to get all these boxes to appear? Dot. Yeah, I have to just change dot this to a, a dot. And there we go. There are boxes. Um, we can make them look a little better. Too. All right, any questions on that? We just created an array using our normal JavaScript, but we filled it with JSX instead of like filling it with numbers. We filled it each one with an element. And then we injected that variable in our return statement here. I have a question. Yeah. In, instead, we put deep in the for loop. Can we put deep in the return and curly bit box and ID in the deep in there instead on the top? Uh. I, one more time. So can we put deep in the return, like deep and curly base boxes? And yeah, yeah. ID? You can surround this with a div. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and put box in there in the middle. Yeah. Yep. And put the ID in the div. It's going to be keep the same thing or it's going to be shin? In this case, it makes sense to call this what? box not and box box like container right this is where all the boxes exist and then here we could what if i wanted the boxes to line up um horizontally what can we use display flex yeah so all the good stuff we've learned still applies it's just a new way of using some of this stuff Um, I mean, like, are we still have to, like, even we put deep in the return here, are we still have to uh, get the deep on the for loop? Oh, oh, oh. I, I, I think maybe I know where you're, you're going. So opening up the console, which we should always have open while we're, while we're working, um, you see this warning? Each child on the list should have unique key prop. Anytime we're... Uh, creating elements using map or a for loop, we need to give them an, a React specific attribute called key that has to be unique. So does anyone have a guess what's a unique value we can give each one of these divs as we iterate through this for loop? I. Yeah, I. And then this warning will go away. So React's happy. So another React rule we have. Uh, when iterating and producing a series of elements, you have to give a key. So React can keep track and do its magic behind the scenes. I know that's kind of weird. Um, and it won't break your app, but you will have that ugly warning in the console. So, um, okay. Uh, here's our next objective. Things are going to get way harder. Um, after three seconds, 
I want to make the boxes blue. After three seconds, I want to make the block the boxes blue. Any ideas there as a class? Some kind of interval? Uh, well, interval repeats, right? But I'm not saying every three seconds. I'm saying just after three seconds. But you're on the you're definitely on the right track. What's what's the evil cousin of uh, set in interval? Set time out. Yeah. So set time out. And what are the two arguments that set time out takes? A function and a delay. A function and a delay. So I said I want three seconds. And then in our normal JavaScript, how how often did this callback function run? How often am I supposed to run? In normal JavaScript, how often did that run? Once. 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 But things are getting going to get oh my god, going to get very messy, right? In React because components uh, run multiple times, usually. Uh, so you'll see here, it ran twice after three seconds. And that's weird, right? Why did it run twice? But then more generally, um, let's talk about the rules of How often does a React component run, right? And we see here we have two console.log, so maybe your guess is it runs twice. How often does a React component run? Does anyone have any insight into this from pre-work? Is, is it, it running because of the strict mode? At least for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're getting a little ahead of us. But yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Brian, you can answer the other question. Okay. Is it every time um, the component updates? Very nice. So every time the state or props, which I know we don't know these words yet, changes, it's going to run. Also, it runs once the first time to mount what's called. So the very first time it runs just to show up, but then it's going to rerun every time its state changes. What was state in Milkman? What was an example of our state? You guys just did it. What's an example of some state in Milkman? Create element. No, that's that's a method, not a not a piece of state. The information that your users that's changing and your user is changing. The number of producers we had. Uh, number of producers. I don't think actually changed because we never added a producer, deleted a producer. Number of um, like the number of milk. Yeah, number of bottles. For sure. Anything else? Cash. Cash. Yeah, that's a good one. Like the amount of each producer? Uh, the amount. Yes. Producer dot, what did you guys call it? Count? Rate. No. R uh, rate actually didn't change, I don't think. Yeah, no, Unless right, you got yeah, right. super fancy. Those are some good examples though, right? So you, you, you have to start develop or you don't have to you you'll naturally start developing a feeling for what your state is but it's the information that's changing especially the information that your user is changing um so react because it needs to adjust the view when state changes it has to refresh the function so this causes us a problem right because set timeout Sometimes we only want a function to run a single time. 
So what do? What can we do? Does anyone find a solution to this? In the world of React, how if we actually just want a function to run a single time, is there something we can use? A certain hook. Use state. Not use state, no. Use effect? Yeah. So the answers uh, to our prayers is use effect. Um, use effect will run a function um, once or, well, let, let's, this is a lie, but let's just for now say it will run a function once, even though this is a lie. Um, so let's test that out, right? Let's, let's get rid of this, or not get rid of it, but we're going to come back to it, but let's explore use effect. So use effect is our first React hook. It's a, a, a function that React gives us. We're hooking into the ecosystem of React. So we have to what's called import it. So what you can do is start typing it and press tab, and it will import it from, um, from the React library. So then that brings up the question of, well, what is importing and exporting, right? Um, I told you today was going to be overwhelming because there's so much new stuff. Uh, and that, to explore that, we need to know the concept of modules. Um, does anyone know what I mean by a module? Well, objects? Uh, n no, not objects, no. Isn't it like in vanilla JavaScript, you can have um, functions that you can import and export within different modules, I guess, files? Right. Yeah. And they, yeah. Uh, so for, for this case, um, the files that end in .jsx, you can think of as their own module. One module knows nothing about anyone else. They are their own kingdom. Where did my cursor go? The only way they can share info is by explicitly importing and exporting what you want to share. So in this case, app.jsx app is a module and we want to use use effect, a function that we didn't write. So we have to import it so we can use it. Um, so now use effect a little bit similar to set timeout, actually. The first uh, argument, well, does anyone know what the first argument is for use effect? Function. Yeah, the first argument is going to be a callback function, just like um, set timeout, right? And the second argument is called an array dependency, which we'll explore more later. But for right now, if you keep it empty, it will just run the function a single time. If you keep this empty, it will just run this callback a single time, except this is already a lie, but I'll explain why in a second. Um, so let's clear this out, press refresh. We see that this actually ran twice which is no better than when we just had the console.log in the function itself. Um, this is a nature of the development environment. In strict, mo strict mode, like Ronald was saying, um, it, it tears down your, it destroys your application and then restarts it. And it does that to make sure your application is robust and it helps you in other areas but it also causes a little confusion because now things we thought were running once are running twice. Um, but it's, it's not really running twice. It's 
starting the whole application, killing it, and then starting it again. So um, in production, I don't believe this will occur like this. I think this will honestly just run once. Um, and in your mental model, just think of it as running once. Yeah. So now that we've kind of uh, have a way to run a function just a single time, what if we move this set timeout into here? How, how many times will we see the console.log now? How many times actually and how many times when this is a real application might we see it? Is it twice actually and then once? Very nice, very nice, yeah. So twice right now because we're in, in development. Um, oh, okay. I have a three-second delay on it. I was like, what is going on? Uh, yeah, so... Wait, hold on. How many times did we see that? Okay. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, there's more work to do. There's more weirdness. And this, this is all weirdness because we're trying to use a timer that's built for vanilla JavaScript. And React is built in such a different way that it, it re-renders constantly. So there's a little more work we have to do. Um, we have to, you know how I said in development, React is... Uh, creating the application, then tearing it down. Unfortunately, the timer in the browser is still running. So when, it, when React tears it down, we have to clear this timer. And how did we clear this timer in normal React, uh, in normal JavaScript? By using clear interval. Yeah, very nice. We use clear interval. But here... In this use effect callback function, if we give it an optional return, it will run a function that really is kind of like another callback function. It'll run this when it tears down the application. So here, when it tears it down, we want to clear this timer because we don't want it still running because it'll interfere. So we have to do this kind of ugly looking code as homework just to use this timer. So now, finally, we want it to run twice. Oh, is it just running once now? Okay. <laughs> um, I think clear timeout, not clear interval. Yeah, okay. So here's what's happening, right? If it's mounting it, it's the, the, the beat is, is mounting it, so it's running. Three seconds later, it'll console.log, and then it's tearing it down. And then I thought it would run it again, but it can, didn't. Yeah. Uh, can you see like clear time out, not clear interval? Oh, oh, oh I did it wrong. I did it wrong. Yeah, you're totally right. Yeah. All right, let's try this again. See what happens. Okay, now uh, it's running once, which is fine because that's what we intend it to do in production. Um, so that's fine. Questions on this so far? Okay, this is all just so we can use the timer, right? So we wanted a function that ran after three seconds, and we have one now with all this work. Um, I, think I, um, I think it's only running one time on the strict mode because, like you said, in strict mode, it artificially like executes the app and then it like shuts it down. 
And oh. since we provided a cleanup function. Oh, you're right. It's shut yeah. it down and clean up, it will clean it up. Ronald, it Ronald's exactly right. Yeah, so it, it's mounting it and then it's clearing it so quickly that our three second timer doesn't have a chance. It gets cleared. But on the second time, the development environment creates it, our application, then it doesn't kill it. And then we see the set, the set timeout. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, so I want to make, I still want to make these boxes blue, make them a little bigger just for fun. Uh, and let's, let's wrap them just again, just for fun. Uh, okay. I did all this crazy, uh, work to get a function that runs a single time in react because we're going against kind of the nature of react. Any ideas now how I can make these boxes blue? How would I make them blue in normal JavaScript? Them. What? Get them a class. Or apply a style directly on it. Yeah, that's a good place to start. Let's start with a a a dot blue color or background color blue. So how can I get all these boxes? all these boxes to turn blue using React. In normal JavaScript, we would do what? Add class, uh, class list. We would just iterate through that array and just manually say element.style. But we can't do that in React, definitely not. What if manually, we're, this isn't going to be the final solution, but what do you think would happen if I just said this? Would that work or not work? Not work. Not work? Work. Work. Yep. So basically, we want to somehow, using React, Add that class after three seconds. This, this is very, very tricky, but it opens the class if anyone thinks they have an idea. We're going to use state as a hint. Okay, so let me show you because it is very challenging. Um, I want to create a piece of state because I have a value uh, that's changing, right? So how do I create state in React? Can this be import use state? We will need to import use state, yep. Any other ideas though, how to create, I want to create a piece of state called, what's a good name for? Maybe would you go const and then in array brackets set blue and comma blue? Yes. Uh, well, I'm not going to call it blue because of, because uh, no. eventually I might want to do another color. I'm going to call it, so ooh, I'm going to call it box color. So to create our box color class, we do const box color and set box color equals use state. And we have to import that in, which I did automatically. What goes in the parentheses to, 
What's our argument for you state? False. The data type that you want. Um, yes. To be initialized. Yes. The empty data type of what you predict in the future box color will be. What data type in the future do I want box color to be? A string. Mm -hmm. String. What's an empty, well, <laughs> empty string is an empty string. So that is how we declare a new piece of state some information that's going to change um yeah in react and instead of hard coding blue here i want to point it at whatever the value of box color is so how can i say put here whatever box color is Early brackets, box color. Yeah, so we need, first we need to change it to backticks because we want to use, uh, sorry, first we need curly braces to tell it we're using JavaScript. Then we need our backticks and then we need our curly, our dollar sign curly braces. And then we put in box color. So this line of code right now is equivalent to what? Is that a template literal? It is, but when it, it's interpreted oh. by JavaScript, what is that string going to actually equal right now? Well, we had previously a box. Hello? Box. Just box with a space. Because box color right now is, is an empty string. That's the value of box color. So now we're going to lose our blue, but we're making good progress because now we have a, we have a, we have a piece of state that we can change after three seconds. So right in here, if I console.log box color, what will I see? What do you think? An empty string? Yeah, so we'll see nothing because it's an empty string. So our goal is to change. So now we want to change box color to equal what? If our objective is still to apply this class, what do we want box color to equal up here? The mm. class name? Yeah, just the that string, blue? just the string blue. We, we want this, remember? We want this to evaluate to blue. So now the question is, how do we change a piece of a React state? How do we change a piece of React state? Use a Yeah, so we use what we destructured from up here, the setter. And that's the only way we can change state in React. We never, we never can do this. This is violating all the laws of React. We have to use the setter. And what argument do I want in here? Blue. Blue. So let's see if this worked, right? After three seconds, we want it to be blue. And there we go. Questions on that? Is Ronald clapping or are you pensively thinking? I'm not sure. Yeah, I was trying to clap, but I just really Okay. <laughs> Remember, don't. I, this is day one of a, a lifetime of React, hopefully. I know it's a lot. 
questions though. Okay. Um, final objective. Uh, I want the color to toggle between red and blue. So I'm changing my objective. I want the color to toggle between red and blue. So instead of set timeout, what do you think I should use? How can I get a function to fire every three seconds? Set, set, set interval. interval. Yeah. So we'll use change that to set interval. And now I need to change this to clear interval. And I save this and we still see that it's blue. That's fine. But is this actually running every three seconds? Let's check that out. Running? Question mark. Yeah, so we're good. This is running every three seconds. So now, does anyone have any ideas how we can toggle between red and blue boxes every three seconds? We basically need to change this somehow to be red. Oh, but except, what's our first task? What do we need to do in the CSS? Create another class, maybe? Yeah. And I'm going to put this back to what we had, our piece of state. So how can we toggle between the two classes? There's probably a million ways to do this, but any ideas? Can you do an if else statement? Yeah, for sure. What were you thinking? Um, if set box color equals blue, set color, set box color. You cut color off. Color equal red or something? Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And your else? Um, you could put um else. Just the reverse. Uh, box color equals blue? Yeah. Maybe. Or um, and then get rid of that line. There's unfortunately, I think, one more thing we might have to do. So when you're changing, <laughs> God, I, I feel awful today because I know how hard this lecture is. In use effect, when you're changing a piece of state, you need to put it in the array dependency. So here, what piece of state are we changing in React? Um, box color. Yeah, so we have to put it as an array dependency item. Um, and now hopefully, finally, red to blue after all that work. We covered a lot of fundamentals of React though. Um, any final questions? Obviously, this code is going to be yours, so you can really try to absorb it. And then today, uh, the workshop, you're going to get a chance to repeat this pattern a bunch. And can you go back up to the, so I could see where you're setting the state? Yeah. So that uh, that use state line um, is that a built-in thing with React? Like, I, I guess yep. I'm just having trouble talking about this, like how this line is being set up here. Yep, built in from React. We just need to import it. Yeah. These are two hooks we're using from React. That's actually the only thing we're using from the React library. Everything else is JSX. 
JavaScript. Okay, so today uh, you're rebuilding day nine. 